Hello, everybody. Mr. Summers here for American Government. This is Chapter 17, Lesson 2. We're going to be talking about party ideology and identification. And so here we go. Here is your swabat. What will students be able to do? Differentiate between liberal and conservative ideologies. Identify differences in viewpoints between Republican and Democratic parties. Identify differences between voters who identify as Republican and voters who identify as Democratic and define plurality vote. Our essential question for today is how does the two-party system influence American democracy? I want you to keep that question in your mind as we are going through this. Uh, try to think of the answers as you go through. Make sure you are taking notes also either while you're typing them down or writing them out because you will have to turn those in. So here we go. What, are, what is an ideology? Well, ideology is a set of basic beliefs about life, culture, government, society. Um, there are two different labels, liberal and conservative uh, are the two major. Um, liberal is the label used to describe people on the left side of the political spectrum. Uh, their ideology tends to be, or the liberal ideology tends to be, um, that the proper role of government is to promote health and health care, uh, of citizenship, education, and justice for everyone. Um, they're usually willing to give up some economic freedoms in order to increase equality, um, but they are in favor of most individual freedoms and believe that most individual freedoms should not be interfered with for moral reasons or any other reason. Um, most liberals uh, support the Democratic Party or align with the Democratic Party um, that's the more kind of liberal wing of uh, the political spectrum for the United States anyway. Conservative, the other label used, that's usually uh, to describe people on the right side of the political spectrum. Uh, conservative ideology tends to believe in limiting the role of government. Um, they believe that individuals are better at solving their problems without government involvement. Uh, they support traditional family values. They're usually based in Christian values and morals. Um, they support government that protects what they believe to be as a moral lifestyle. Um, and again, these are uh, taken right from your textbook. These are not my definitions. They're taken right from your textbook. Um, now, most conservatives do support uh, the Republican Party. So the Republican Party is part of what would be considered the right wing uh, here in the United States. Okay, then we have the moderates. The moderates are the people who are in between. They don't fully embrace um, uh, either the left or the right. Um, their ideology um, usually falls somewhere in between uh, conservative and liberal. Um, they might be conservative on uh, moral issues, but more liberal on uh, economic issues. So that might mean that they believe in um, yeah, they don't support um, uh, same-sex marriage. They don't support, um, or they're, they're pro-life, not pro-choice. So it means they don't support abortion for any reason, um, or maybe only under certain circumstances. Um, so that kind of like religious morality that they might favor, but they might be liberal on economics. So they might also believe that education should be uh, more fully available, uh, to everyone, there should be more economic and um, and social justice. That uh, maybe there should be health care for everyone. Um, those kinds of things. So they would be in between, not all of one or all of another. Somewhere in between. These people sometimes are also known as centrists because they're in the center of the ideologies. Um, moderates um, still might you know, identify as Republican or Democrat, um, or they might choose a third party. A lot are more um, prone to choose a third party than to, um, you know, align with either Republican or Democrat. All right, a political ideology can help someone um, to uh, frame their point of view of government or of public policy. It can help them to know who to choose to vote for, um, or it can ease their uh, research into who to vote for. Um, 
but these are very, very basic levels for very complex arrangements of viewpoints. Um, so just kind of keep that in mind also. Um, most Americans actually, when they take a political ideology quiz, find themselves more in the center than they do to either wing. Platforms. Uh, a platform is just a statement uh, of beliefs on issues set forth by a political party or a candidate. Um, it's kind of like um, if you've ever been to the beach and been out on the pier, right? The pier is that thing that goes out, so made of wood and pillars that goes out into the ocean, right? And in order to create that platform, you have to have planks. You have to have those wood beams that you walk on, the planks that you walk on. Um, the platform is that whole structure, okay? And each, each idea, each political statement or belief is a plank in that structure, okay? So platforms are established uh, usually at uh, party conventions. They usually follow uh, the presidential candidate for that political party, they usually follow their uh, beliefs on political issues. Um, so every four years during presidential election cycles, the platform um, is pretty much then what sets forth what the party is going to do and how they're going to react to public policy, the types of public policy they're going to pass, at least for the next four years. Okay. Um, so we're going to look at some of the party platforms here. Okay. So the Republican Party platform um they so this is right from their websites um they support individual rights uh in opposition to a large intrusive government oppose too much government intervention in the economy um support medicare that's health insurance for the elderly um do not believe uh in climate change science but believe in environmental protection by private landowners only not by the government um, they, they support restrictions on public employee labor unions, so it's like teacher unions, government employee unions. Um, as I said before, they oppose abortion, they're pro-life. Um, they support only traditional marriage between one man and one woman. Um, they do not support um, same-sex marriage. Uh, they do support uh, or prefer lower taxes and oppose taxing the wealthy at higher rates than the poor. Um, and I know I'm bouncing around all over. Um, they promote uh, coal, oil, gas industries and increased development of those industries in the United States. Um, they believe that federal owned land, so government owned land should be open for private corporation use for things like logging, um, oil, coal, uh, other materials for mining um, and, and other things. Um, they, they believe very strongly in the idea of American exceptionalism and that it's America's role to influence all world affairs. Um, and they also um, believe in strong military spending and less on international allies and the UN. And I think there were a couple of things that I didn't hit on in there. That's okay. You've got it all written there for you to read. Democrats uh, believe, quote, we're greater together than we are on our own. This country succeeds when everyone gets a fair shot, even uh, when everyone does their fair share. Okay, um, They believe the government should generally take a bigger role in providing social services and security to the nation, prefer to increase taxes on the wealthy and reduce taxes on the poor, encourage government regulations to protect consumers, um, the, the federal minimum wage increase, they are in favor of labor unions, they do support same-sex marriage and LGBTQ plus rights, uh, women's rights, minority rights, they are pro-choice, uh, which means they support a woman's right to choose um, whether to have an abortion or whatever kinds of reproduction um, support they want, um, equal wage despite gender or race, uh, they do believe in uh, climate change science, um, and I'm not going to go through all the rest of those. You can see them there. Okay. Uh, if you have any questions on any of these, make sure write them down so that when we uh, meet again, you can we can discuss them. All right. Two of the major minor parties here: the Green Party, the Libertarian Party. Uh, the Green Party is a single. Uh, 
issue party, uh, mostly focusing on climate change. Uh, the Libertarian Party is a little bit more open. They believe in lots of rights, very little government involvement, very few taxes, um, pretty open. Um, and yes, their symbol is a little hedgehog. Yeah, yeah. And, and Green Party, obviously, it's an earth with leaves growing out of it. Okay, so kind of common sense is that. Um, the other major minor party that exists right now is the Constitution Party. There's their symbol. It's an eagle with the red, white stripes and stars. Um, they're generally more conservative than the Republican Party, uh, if you can believe that that's even possible. Um, they, they advocate the abolition um, or the removing of all federal taxes, including income tax. They advocate for dismantling several federal agencies, abhor, oppose abortion in all cases, so rape, uh, incest, whatever, it doesn't matter. There's no abortion at all. Um, they completely oppose same-sex marriage and LGBTQ plus rights. Um, they believe in phasing out Social Security. And so the Constitution Party is extremely more conservative, just like um, the Green Party is very more liberal than the Democratic Party. So there you have the two extremes. Libertarians are kind of usually considered to be somewhat centrist. Um, even though they have very extreme views on uh, personal responsibility and minimum government. Uh, party identification. So um, this is just what measures a voter's sense of attachment to a political party. Um, how they vote, though, is something completely different. Uh, in 2015, 30% of voters identified as Democratic 25% is Republican and 40% with no party at all. Um, those who do not identify with any party are often called independents, um, not to be confused with the American Independent Party, which is a political party. Um, less than 1% of Americans identify with a minor party. All right, a little bit more about Republicans. Yes, the Republican, the symbol for the Republican Party is uh, the elephant. Um, comes from a political cartoon. You see it right there where this is a bunch of animals escaping from a zoo and one of the animals, the elephant, is labeled. You can see there with the, it says the Republican vote on it. And uh, after this political cartoon, that just kind of stuck as the symbol for this political party. Abraham Lincoln was the first Republican. Uh, the Republican Party was established in the year 1860. Uh, Lincoln was the first presidential candidate, and of course he won that year. That's why he's the president. He was, was the president. Um, more breakdown of Republicans. So kind of who are Republicans? You can kind of see the breakdown there. Uh, the race, down, race breakdown, 43% uh, of whites identify as Republican, 8% of blacks. 28% of Hispanics, 27% of Asians, 48% uh, of men claim to be Republican, and 37% and of women. So a big uh, gender gap there. Um, generational gaps uh, or groups that uh, claim to be Republican. Um, the largest is the silent generation. These would be your great-great-grandparents if they're still alive. Um, these are the ones who were alive during and fought during World War II, sometimes known as the greatest generation as well, 52% of them, 46% uh, of baby boomers, uh, Gen X, that's my generation, 43% uh, claim Republican, and millennials only 32%. Uh, religion, you see the religious breakdown. The majority of uh, white evangelicals, so those are, it's a certain type of Protestant Christian, 77%. Um, um, these are usually uh, types of churches like you see um, the TV preachers that are all, oh, hallelujah, praise, and, and, and talking in tongues and, and things like that. Um, you only have, only 7% though of black evangelicals. Okay, so there's a split racially in the evangelical group with 77% uh, of white evangelicals claiming a Republican association. 
46 uh, percent of American Catholics, 72 percent of, of American Mormons, 31 percent of American Jews, and then uh, only 22 percent of those who do not claim a religion uh, consider themselves Republican. Uh, the breakdown there of urban, suburban, and rural. So you can see that the majority of people who are, live in farming areas like us claim uh, Republican. And uh, then you see also the breakdown in education. Um, so 47% of those who have their highest education is a high school diploma uh, claim Republican, 39% of college graduates and 31% of those with uh, a degree higher than a bachelor, so a master's or a doctorate. So the, the higher the education level, the less likely they are to be Republican. That's not saying Republicans are stupid or anything like that. It just happens to be the trend, okay? Democrats, the symbol of the Democratic Party is a donkey. Um, there's a link there to a video that you can watch on history.com on the history of the political parties. Um, so basically the history of the donkey is that in 1828, as Andrew Jackson was running for president, um, a lot of his uh, opponents, people that didn't like him, called him a jackass. They said he was stubborn. Um, and uh, Jackson was the kind of person that said, basically, um, you're going to call me names. I'm going to take that name. You know what? The jackass is a pretty honorable animal. And so I'm going to make it my symbol. And he started using it on his political campaign posters and things like that. And he was the first uh, Democrat, uh, Democrat president. Um, about 1828 is about when the Democratic Party was started. And so, again, the symbol stuck. And here we are today with um, Democrats, uh, you know, being symbolized by the donkey or the jackass. You know, laugh here if you want. Um, but then again, you could laugh about Republicans being big, giant, bloated animals that uh, don't change much and, uh, you know, are, are huge and lumber around. So, you know, take your pick on how you want to laugh at that. Um, okay, so again, uh, the two parties, remember now, the two parties, and we're going to talk about this later, they are drastically different today than they were when they first started. So if you went back and you did your research and looked at the Democratic Party in 1828, it would actually look a lot like the Republican Party today as far as its platform. And the same for the Republican Party in 1860. The things that the, the Republican Party in 1860, uh, their platform looks a lot like today's Democratic Party. So somewhere in time, and we'll talk about again this later, uh, they flipped. Okay, so Democrats, here's the breakdown. 51% of whites, 84% of blacks, okay, 63% of Hispanics, Asians, so minorities definitely um, are bigger supporters of the Democratic Party, partly because of the fact that the Democrats have supported uh, minority rights a lot more than the Republican Party has since Lincoln. Okay, so in 1965, it was uh, the Democratic Party that passed the Voting Rights Act and passed the uh, Equal Rights Acts. Okay, so keep that in mind. It was not the Republicans, they fought against it. Uh, you can see 56% of women uh, identify as Democrats. Uh, you can see millennials, by far, 59% of millennials uh, associate with the Democratic Party, 48% of Gen X, 48% of baby boomers, 43% of silent or greatest generation. You can see, though, on the religious breakdown, it's just it's the flip, obviously. Okay, So... Um, more likely that if you don't associate strongly with a religion or if you are uh, an American Jew or a black evangelical, you associate more with the Democrats. Um, again, because Democrats, again, if you look back at the platform, focusing more on science, higher educated, you know, and, and things like that. Sometimes that has effect on religious beliefs. Um, but then again, there's that black evangelical vote there. Okay, and again, has to do with the minority population, okay? So uh, Democrats tend to be more urban, living in big cities, as well as suburban, not so much rural, okay? And you can see the education breakdown there. 
Again, like I said earlier, higher the education tends to be more likely to fall in with the Democrats. Okay, and we're just about done here. Talk a little bit about polarization. Polarization is that idea of pushing away from each other. Um, Republicans definitely not agreeing at all on almost anything with Democrats. Democrats being, uh, you know, not agreeing almost at all with anything from the Republicans. That's that polarization, keeping people far away from each other and pushing further and further out to the side. So Republicans pushing more conservative and more right, Democrats pushing more liberal, pushing more left, okay? Um, again, you can take a look at that right here on this graph. Um, as uh, liberals push more to the left, they become more with a larger government, socialism, the extreme would be communism and dictatorship. On the right side, um, the more you push out to the right, you end up towards uh, 1930s German Nazism and into fascism. And again, we're talking about dictatorship there on the side. So the further you push, the more extreme you become to either side, the more likely you are to push towards dictatorship. Okay, Dictatorship is where you have one person in charge of the government, and that's it. You have a single ruler. Okay, So think of... Um, Stalin for the communism side, think of Hitler for the right wing side, okay? Um, so that's that's where they're pushing, okay? And uh, if you, you know, listen at all to politics or anything, um, as the Republican Party is pushing more right wing, um, yeah, you hear a lot of references to people uh, saying that President Trump is a lot like Hitler. That's because the party is pushing more right wing, moving you know, in that direction, becoming more and more conservative, um, you know, and, and honestly, and this is not political at all, if, if you go back and you look at some of the speeches and the way Hitler talked, some of the things that American exceptionalism, okay, and in Stalin too, I'll be honest, Stalin too, remember your lessons about dictators, okay, um, from before World War II, when they talked about you know the exceptionalism of their country, okay, just think about that, okay, and the more militarization and, and stuff like that. So if you you know you wonder why you know people are are starting to say that our government is becoming more and more fascist, it's because it's pushing with Trump, it's pushing more and more conservative, more and more right wing towards that fascism side of the right wing, okay. And people said the same thing about Obama, who was who was Democrat. They were they were saying that his government was pushing more and more towards socialism, towards communism, and they compared him with uh, a lot of the socialist leaders, um, Stalin and, and Lenin and them as well. Okay. So what do we do? Well, some have proposed getting more Americans to vote as a solution to end polarization. The idea that, again, like I mentioned earlier, most Americans are centrists. So the more Americans we get to vote, the more we can pull that polarization back and bring us more towards the center. Uh, some people think we need more third parties that represent the center more than the extremes. Um, others think uh, this is just a moment. It, it's going to pass, and we just kind of need to wait through it. Others think that uh, within the next 8 to 12 years, the two-party system is going to just gonna break. Um, and, and one of two things will happen. It'll either end in a civil war uh, with literally – political Republicans against Democrats in, in a civil war, or the two-party system will completely break down and will become a multi-party system. What's it going to be? I don't know. Only time will tell. And depending on how we vote, again, the more p as people vote towards the center, then the less likely we are to spread towards the sides. All right. So why do you need to know all of this? Well, it's part of being informed, okay? And being understanding parties and their ideologies can help you when it comes time to vote and understand what's going on in the world around you. Um, you can understand where people are coming from. If you understand uh, what someone is talking about uh, and, and why they're saying what they're saying, it can help you to understand. Um, so as we talk more about politics, um, you should better understand uh, what we're talking about and understanding the ideologies of political parties can help you decide which party you align with. All right, so that's it for this for today.
and we will see you later.